For our interview this month, I'm joined by Martin Wyatt, who is one of the partners at Whitley Stimson, uh, a firm in Banbury. And Martin has developed over the last few years a specialism uh, for accounting and auditing with academies, obviously an area of huge growth. And uh, as I travel up and down the country, a number of people have said, that they'd like to know more about it. Is it something they should be doing? Um, Martin, welcome. And uh, yep. first of all, how did you get into it? I mean, how did you suddenly decide actually academies were something that you should be doing? I had been a, a governor at Banbury School for a number of years, um, and they began talking about becoming an academy. Uh, academy to me was Sunderland Football Academy or Oxford United Football Academy. Uh, so I asked the head what it was about. Um, she explained it to some degree. So I went on a course, and it was all about accounts, audit, law, regulations. And I kept writing down, we can do this, we can do this. And after that, I sort of gathered my thoughts, put together a business plan and decided to launch myself into the education world, immerse myself uh, in all documents and literature that I could find. Um, but it was a direct result of a school that I had a personal interest in becoming an academy. Mm. And you say you, you looked at the the course was talking about accounts and audit. Mm. Um, so is it is it you know P and L balance sheet the same as we would see every day, or is it? It, it is to a degree. Uh, an academy is a company limited by guarantee uh, and, and an exempt charity. Uh, the accounts. Um, they are company accounts, charity accounts, but also there's a requirement for them to produce specific disclosures and requirements for EFA. EFA is the Education Funding Agency, which is an arm of the Department of Education. So they issue uh, a financial handbook every year that contains uh, the set format for uh, the accounts that uh, have to be produced. They call it Coke Town Limited. Why Coke Town? Goodness only knows. But that contains all the disclosure requirements. So yes, P and L uh, that you would expect to see in charity accounts, restricted funds, unrestricted funds. But more than that, there are specific disclosures as they are an academy. Okay, but if you were a charity expert and um, you know you, you got this 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 Coke Town booklet. Could could uh, uh, your average firm watching this now, could they have a go at academy accounts? They could certainly have a go at academy accounts if they learnt it by rote, uh, but in terms of actually understanding some of the disclosures and why those disclosures are in there, it is different to normal charity accounts. Okay, and then presumably because it's a charity um, and also because it's public uh, funding, we're looking at a very different set of audit thresholds, are we? Completely different audit thresholds. Uh, all academies have to be audited. Their annual income is called GAG, the General Annual Grant. You might have a small primary school with, say, a 400,000 or 500,000 pounds annual income. Even though it's so low, they still have to be audited because it's public monies. So uh, the regulations are such uh, that all academies have to be audited. And so you, you were saying it's a, it's a company limited by guarantee, yes. so you have companies out requirements. Yes. Um, as viewers will know, the charity requirements can be really quite different to that. Yes. But then you've got this extra one, the, the you said smaller. EFA. EFA. EFA is then EFA a third regulations. set of requirements. Yes. Um, so presumably the, the, it's almost time for people to go and make a cup of tea and say, do you know what, I'm not going to do it. I think to some degree, yes. If people haven't got the time, the commitment uh, to want to enter this new world that's emerging, then steer clear of it. If, however, you want to put business development time in and build a niche as we have done, then it, it is profitable, but it's also very rewarding in terms of giving a service back to a service sector. Mm. And, and I didn't say at the start, but I should mention, you told me off camera, that you have over 60, uh, 60 Over 60, 60 academies. Yeah, yes. that you're dealing with, and that's from... Correct. That's as far south as uh, Sussex, uh, Bournemouth, Paul, right up to Yorkshire, a com complete spread of multi-academy trusts, Multi-academy trusts are where there are a number of academies that have joined together uh, to form a single entity. We have standalone academies, uh, and we also have a number of special educational need uh, schools that we look after. Right, and then presumably within these disclosure documents, it would have different requirements for the, the type of school? or Different requirements in terms of if you're a multi-academy trust, you have to consolidate the results into one. But effectively, whatever type of academy are, you are, you, you fit within the, um, the normal Coke Town accounts. Okay, and then presumably if you're auditing as well as doing the accounts, you must have, obviously, to divide that with the staff that you have. Correct. But then, 
if they're different accounts and you need somebody who's uh, a specialist in companies, charities, uh, government rules, and also on top of that, understanding the ins and outs, that's a very specialist audit person. It's a very specialist audit person. We now have distinct staff who are ring fence and who only do academy work. And that's also helpful in that uh, an academy's year end is the 31st of August. They have to have their, com their accounts audited and completed and with the Department of Education by the 31st of December. So with Christmas, Yuletide and everything, you've got really until the 20th of December to get those accounts completed and audited. Wow, so um, as people are watching this, their children will have just gone back to school, their colleagues and their friends who are teachers will just have gone back to school for the start of the, the autumn term. By the end of that autumn term, you have to have done the accounts, done the audit and filed it. Correct. Within that time frame. Correct, yeah. So these specialists, what, what do you do with them the rest of the year? Believe it or not, they are still fully involved in the academy sector. Within the academy sector, uh, they, there are a great need in terms of additional services. So uh, we offer assistance with preparing their budgets. We also have to go, out, go in and carry out um, internal audits. Uh, there's a requirement that uh, the accounting systems and controls of academies are checked either on a peer-to-peer -peer review, i.e. another academy, or the external auditors can go in and do that audit work to produce the reports for the governors to use in their gov uh, governing body meetings. Right. And, and do you get involved in that side of things, the governors', the governor's meetings? Yeah, abs absolutely. There's um, a very uh, close focus at the moment on governance. Um, the government sees uh, governors as having to have the right skills and expertise in order to manage uh, an academy, particularly the finance side, with new rules and regulations coming in. So we have to get involved because we are explaining, we're training people who have no, um, sometimes no professional background at all, parents who have become uh, directors all of a sudden of a company and we go in and train and support them in what being a governor and a director of a company is all about. Mm. And so in terms of the governance of the of the schools, um, presumably you don't become a governor or there isn't somebody from the accounts team on the governor's board. No, we're, we are excluded uh, from be, being a governor. Um, if We can't be a governor and the auditor. Sure. Uh, it, it's uh, not allowed. Okay, but what, what sorts of things are you involved in with the, that governing body then? How are you working with them? We, uh, we do seminars. We do seminars uh, with firms of solicitors on uh, the aspects of, of being a director. Uh, we help train them on reading and interpreting a set of financial statements and accounts. We see them regularly uh, on our uh, internal audit visits and the reports of those where they need to improve or change things uh, within their accounting systems and accounting controls. Mm. So uh, to, to just looking at it as a, an overall picture, obviously there's the commitment later in the year, there's this ongoing relationship and really helping the, the business, the school, um, make their financial decisions presumably and really being involved in that. It sounds about as far away from Wolf on Wall Street as you can get. It sounds a very sort of quite a pleasurable job, I would imagine. It's extremely pleasurable. Uh, three or four years ago, I was very, very disheartened with accountancy in general through the recession and clients wanting to make more profit, pay less fees and pay less tax. And I've just got really disheartened. So to come into this sector where you're able to really put something back uh, in terms of service, it's, it's not about making profit, it's not about saving tax, it's actually about using the funds that they have for the benefit of the children. And if you forget that, even I as an accountant, if I forget what, what education and an academy is about, which is children, then um, I'm failing them and I'm failing my clients. And so at 60 academies you were saying you've already got, I mean yes. is that pretty much all you can take or, or? Oh no, far from it. Uh, that was the reason I looked ahead. I was looking ahead to, you know, two, three years, which is why I took on uh, a, another partner, headhunted a partner. I'd like to get over a hundred academies. Um, I'm not sure what position we are in terms of number of academies as clients, in terms of, you know, top 20. Um, I want to aim for the top 10 uh, and we're building a team, uh, an expert team to cope with uh, more academies and to offer what I consider to be a first-class service and a, a service that's driven from the heart. 
And that's what I was going to say, really. So what, uh, you know, a lot of the very big firms will be saying, oh, yes, but, you know, we have entire buildings set aside to this. Why, why should I come to you? You come to me because of the commitment and the passion that I have. Uh, and we have an expert in-house team as good as, if not better than, uh, some of the top firms. OK. Martin Wyatt, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, I've put on uh, the screen there Martin Wyatt's contact details. If you do want to get in touch with him, you'll find all the information you need on screen.